This is Special Forces Assessment and Selection. Survive two weeks in hell, and maybe they'll take you. Pick that weakness up! Put it in your pocket! We don't need you! Don't come to this interview unprepared. What is wrong with you, Kennedy? <laughs> I got my ID now, yo. So while they're out here, you'll see a lot of guys will quit because they've never been in the woods before. You know, they're cooks, mechanics, people that have never been outdoors, never land nav, aren't used to the elements of coming out here. You know, noises will scare them, bugs will scare them. They'll freak out. The weather's supposed to get colder out here, so they tend to drop really quick because they're not used to it. What we train in is what we're going to fight in. So weather doesn't play a part in our selection. The Star Course covers over 50 square miles. Using a map and a compass, each candidate is given a set of locations. They have 10 hours to find. Two weeks in hell, part three. These guys are getting ready to start the star course again. 10 hour land navigation exercise. Let's jump right into it, guys. Go ahead, make sure you guys plot your points. The points are miles apart and well hidden. This is the big one. Very worried. But, uh, you know, not crazy worried where I'll panic or anything. I just hope I can find a point in the dark. I'm not too used to that one. <laughs> it's pretty much been non-stop the whole time, just moving and moving and moving. I uh, just got a few hours of sleep tonight. Uh, a few hours the night before. I haven't really stopped moving since we got here. This is our chance to see their ability to comprehend and learn basic land navigation skills with a simple map, a compass, and a protractor. And we want the guy that's going to go out there and find all of his points. So before they even get to the point where they're doing the store course, so the store course is the last thing they do throughout the land navigation and oration, right? So they go out there for three days, and throughout those three days, they're conducting two practical exercises a day. One during the day, one at night. And those practical exercises could range anywhere from, you know, uh, six to eight hours per. So they're constantly moving and moving and moving. And those practical exercises, that also goes towards whether or not you are able to get selected or not, right? Because they want to make sure that you know how to conduct land navigation. So prior to going out, they'll give you a quick class down and dirty, basic land navigation. Then they do the force uh, rock march out there. Once they get out there, you're conducting practical exercises, guys, on the regular, right? And then the store course, that's the last uh, 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 test you'll take. It's a go or no go event before you're done with the land navigation uh, phase of selection. Right, and the store course, guys, it starts at night and it goes into the day. You have 10 hours. You're by yourself, no one's with you, and you have to be able to execute. No matter what. For the first time in the course, the candidates are completely alone. But someone is always watching. Unbelievably hard, especially in the dark. It's crazy. I don't know which way the roads are. So the roads are a big deal at Special Forces assessment and selection, right? Um, we have what's called roadkill. So if you get within 50 meters of a road, cadre that's probably hidden somewhere around there because they know exactly when students or where students like to get really close to the roads they'll come out and they'll do what's called a road kill a road kill means that hey you got too close to the roads you fail to follow instruction you're either gonna get a uh a, a bad spot report or they might pull you right then and there right but at night it's extremely hard because it's all dirt, right? Like there's no pavement out there. So you don't know when you're on a road. You don't know when you're near a road. You just have to be really, really, really cognizant on of what you're doing during your route planning. The camera teams use night vision systems alongside the cadre. It's pitch black and near freezing. 
getting ready to go out down to a choke point where candidates like to get out onto the road, get out of the woods and, and try to keep their feet dry. It's basically cheating. Basically, I'm just going to be there to try to catch these guys in the act. So you see how he's dressed up in a ghillie suit right there with night vision goggles so he can blend into the environment. Guys, that's a thing. They actually fucking do this, right? And like I said earlier, they know exactly where candidates like to cross roads, right? Scuba Road is a big one, right? Scuba Road is a piece of terrain that we have out there that's completely submerged underwater. To get to the other side where that point is, you have two options. You could try to go around and use the road that's right there, or you go through the fucking little creek that's right there. And a lot of guys tend to go around, and that's where Cadre's fucking hanging out, ghillie suit, NVGs, just waiting for you to mess up. Before the navigation test started, the candidates were given very strict rules to follow. Cheating here is a bad idea. You are not allowed to walk with your light on. You cannot navigate with your light on. He stopped moving. He hunkered down a little bit. It looks like he's moving out again. Isolated in a dark forest, a small light may offer some security and comfort, but it also may be a ticket home. Why were you moving with your light on? No excuse, sir. Okay. Go ahead and give me your scorecard at this time. He's been at this since 2 in the morning, and he hasn't even found one point yet. It's not looking good for him. Roster number 43. Yes, sir. Okay, failure to follow instructions. Roger, sir. You're not supposed to be moving with your light on at any time. Yes, sir. It happens quite a bit. The setup we have here is a thermal image, picks up body heat, tell where they're at, where they're moving. The FLIR Recon 3 is a handheld thermal binocular system that can clearly depict a human figure from over five miles away. It's a special operations favorite. Body heat is almost impossible to conceal. They cannot navigate on the roads. They can't walk on the roads. They can't walk within 50 meters of a road. If they're caught, they become what we call a road kill. The terrain is riddled with chest deep swamps and thick vegetation. Roads off. Yeah, so that's Scuba Road right there, guys. To get to it, you literally have to go through that to get to the other side. And a lot of guys that go to selection, man, I don't know why, but they're afraid of a little bit of water and they'll try to cheat and find other ways to get around that. And it's it's not worth it. Land navigation week for us or these three days is probably the biggest event where we lose a shit ton of candidates, right? Because either guys don't know how to conduct land navigation Guys don't know how to follow the rules, and a lot of guys don't understand why this is so important. Guys, in order to go down range and conduct acti activities as a singleton, as an individual, land navigation is our tool of assessing whether or not you can do that and follow the instructions. Can you lead yourself through the store course without messing up? If you can't do this, then how are we supposed to trust you to go down range and and operate alone when nobody's around to watch you, when everybody's back in the States. If you can't do this, then more than likely, guys, you're not what we're looking for. Promise of dry and easy passage. Rather than try and navigate through this thick area here or try and go around this uh, pond right here, they'll try and cross right here. In hostile territory, the enemy would set up snipers at a choke point like this. It's the perfect hide site for a roadkill. There's a candidate right over there. It's your roster number, candidate. What point it's on? You got a headlamp on you, 148? Take a look down at what's beneath your feet. Now look at the trees. You see how they kind of line up? There's a reason this one area has got tire tracks and it's wide, which you just walked down. Let me see your scorecard, candidate. 
You have just become a roadkill. Continue your point and get off my road. Well, we got our little tricks that we do to catch them doing the wrong thing. The infrared flow light, which allows me to utilize the PVS 7s or PVS 14s, which is what I'm wearing. The candidates have glint patches on their vests. With night vision and an infrared light source, they are clearly spotted without giving away the cadre's presence. They might hear me coming, but they ain't gonna see me coming. Another candidate is using his flashlight. Now, the biggest thing with this, guys, is instead of trying to cheat the system, just show up and do the right thing, right? Just show up and give it 100%. And don't try to do anything that's going to cause cadre to find you and get rid of you. All right? If you're not supposed to use light, don't use light. If you're not supposed to sleep on the course, don't sleep on the course. Just plot your point, walk to it, plot your point, walk to the next one, and then spend the entire 10 hours on the move and doing the right thing. There's a bunch of guys in this selection class that are doing the right thing. All right? And you'll never see them, you'll never hear of them. But the guys that are doing the wrong thing, those are the guys that's going to get rolled up through the woods. He's on. He's followed this ridge line. There he is. See him. Do this in a war zone, and it attracts the enemy from miles away. What's your roster number, Kenny? 67, John. Be quiet. You're walking in there with your red lens flashlight. Therefore, you are being assessed for it. Give me your score. Candidates are spread out over miles of dark and treacherous terrain. Heavily outnumbered, the cadre needs something to even the odds. Let's go get him. You can run, but you can't hide. What's up? What is your roster number? One, uh, 157, sir. Two hundred plus Green Beret candidates are spread out on a navigation test in the remote North Carolina woods. They're outfitted with a new computer enhanced t-shirt that sends back real-time information on each candidate's physiological condition. It's a critical safety tool. But it also broadcasts their location. We're getting a regular transmission every 30 seconds. The motion information indicates that they're not moving or their heart rate is indicating they're uh, unconscious, asleep, um, injured. We have a uh, roster number 157 that hasn't been moving for uh, 27 minutes. So we're just going to go down there and check him out and see what his situation is. Now, again, these guys are out there by themselves, walking around in the woods, guys, and anything could happen. In the past, there's been stories of guys getting injured, guys getting uh, 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 bitten by snakes. Uh, there's been a couple of instances where guys have become, you know, a heat cat, not having enough water on there and actually uh, uh, ended up dying. Right. So this type of technology is meant to help cadre uh, keep these guys safe. Right. Um, and for this particular class, I know for a fact that it did. And I also had this type of technology in my class also, because, again, with. 400 plus dudes at any given time on the land nav course they need something to even out the odds to make sure that everyone is safe because again the intent here isn't to hurt anybody it's to properly assess individuals to see whether or not they could move on to the qualification course this 54 beats per minute typically be associated with somebody sleeping let's go see if he's sleeping the electronic surveillance team pinpoints the candidate's exact location by GPS. Something's off. The beacon indicates that 157 is within 25 feet of this location. His reflection vest should be clearly illuminating his position. But there's no sign of him. Kennedy, what's your roster number? 
Kennedy. What's up? What is your roster number? What, uh, 157, son. What are you doing, 157? I was waiting for daylight, son. Now, a lot of guys will try to do this, right? Even the guys that are crushing it on the actual course. They've been deprived of sleep for so much. Like, they'll try to get a quick little cat nap, and then they'll get back up, and then they'll finish the course. The problem with this is, not only is it an integrity violation, right? Not following instruction, but what this guy did is also a safety violation because he hid his reflective best or his reflective tape that is on his rucksack from the actual cadre, right? So he got a double no-go here. Is there sleeping allowed during this exercise? No, it's not. Is there a reason your rucksack is camouflaged? Where's the road guard vest? So you blatantly hiding your road guard vest? No, it's not. Why is that, candidate? Make it easier for me to stay here, sir. From who? From anybody. Who you hide? Hey, at least he's honest, right? Hey, I don't want you motherfuckers to see me. That's why I'm hiding my vest, all right? I'm hiding from y'all. Candidate? No one specific, sir. I didn't Name want... the purpose of having the road guard vest and all the other safety items we have. Just to stay safe so that way no, I don't get run over to get freaking... So how does the cadre find you? For instance, if you're in this draw hurt upside down, how do we find you if you hide your equipment? Uh, I was going to throw it back on when I started trekking again, sir. When was that, candidate? Pretty soon here. My alarm's about to go off. Go ahead and lay down, just like you were sleeping. Do the right thing, you don't have nothing to worry about. That's what it's about, what you do when you're on your own. So let's say we're in Afghanistan. What do you do then? You're on your own, foreign country where people don't speak English. You do the right thing or do the wrong thing. So that's what we're trying to instill in them now. What do you do on your own? Get all your equipment together, let's go. Number 157 broke a serious rule when he ditched his safety gear and tried to hide from the cadre. For him, it's game over. Yeah, so if you notice, all the other guys that were getting infractions or spot reports, even though it was going to weigh heavily on their ability to get uh, selected, they're still afforded the opportunity to continue with the course, right? Because at the end of the day, they might end up finishing it you know what I mean? They might have done really good at the very beginning when they were conducting the practical exercises. They might still have a chance. But when you break a major safety rule, like taking off your vest or hiding your vest, then your selection is over right then and there. They're just going to tell you to grab your shit and get in the back of the truck and you're done. Right. So don't do this, guys, if you plan on going to Special Forces Assessment and Selection. And if you are, Make sure you check out GreenburyChronicles.com there, guys. I have basic land nav, advanced land nav, all right, and also intermediate land nav to help you guys learn how to do this properly, stay away from the roads, and up your chances of getting selected. If you're interested in this, GreenburyChronicles.com, guys. Make sure you reach out to me. ...decision that he makes on his own accord. I even asked him if he thought he was still Special Forces quality. And I reiterated to him, honor, integrity, failure to follow instructions. And he still said he was special force quality. And I said, well, maybe at a later date, but the fact that you failed to follow instructions, basic instructions, you know, you're definitely not our quality, what we're looking for today. They need to train, candidate. Yes, sir. Throughout the night, the candidates have been crashing through miles of dark and treacherous terrain. For those who have grown up in the rural outdoors, the land navigation test is relentless miles and tough terrain. What are you doing, Kennedy? Why don't you get up and get moving, Kennedy? Grow up in the city, and it's chaos. It's taking you an hour and 45 minutes to get through this draw? <laughs> yes, sir. Go to the formation area. Time is up. There's no loom or anything, so it's like being in a closet with trees. I feel like a 60 year old man, that's about it. I've been running since the, the sun came up. I couldn't see crap, it was dark. Got a little turned around at night, so I ended up spending about uh, a good amount of time just bubble through the river. And uh, when I got out, I had to run basically uh, it was about 12 or 13 clicks to my next point. 
And I uh, basically just sprinted my ass to the third one. Trucks bring in loads of candidates who finished at other checkpoints. The candidates who have not finished, uh, we have to start policing them up. The cadre sweep up the last of the stragglers. Go ahead and hop in the back of the truck. Don't lean against the tailgate, all right? Voluntarily with the Drew about 10 minutes ago. Coming out here, mentally, I just wasn't where I needed to be. I mean, physically, it can always be better, but mentally, I wasn't right. Go! It's just been a few days, and already the miles are tearing up the class. And that was an experience I'm pretty sure I'll never forget. <laughs> That's my buddy Ray. Right? He and I were uh, um, instructors together over the 18 Charlie Committee. But yes, guys, um, Lane Nav, all right, it destroys candidates, right? And if you can't lead yourself in the woods, then we can't trust you to lead yourself downrange by when you're by yourself and you're expected to do the right thing. And as long as you prepare for this, you shouldn't have a problem. But if you have it, it's going to show. In two weeks, they will cover over 130 miles often under back-breaking conditions. As the class moves back to base, the fear of failure sinks in for those who didn't hit all their navigation points. They are all about to look fear dead in the eyes. This is not required of your thing! Hurry up, candidate! Guys, two weeks in hell, right? They just got done with land nav. Next, they're gonna hit the obstacle course, followed by team week all right guys this is part three if you want me to keep doing these let me know put part four in the comment section below guys until next time take care of yourselves